they treating me like this? I mean, they're treating me like I'm a fucking animal or something. Just I don't know what I relax. did wrong. Relax. Just relax, all right? Relax? What do you mean, relax? Look what just happened to me. I'm trying to figure out what just happened. Didn't they tell you what happened? I mean, look at my face. Look at my clothes. I was nearly raped. And all I get is it's a relax from you? You know what? I can't even fucking deal with it. Like, hey, sh chill out. C calm down, all right? I'm just trying to get the facts straight. Well, the motherfucker almost raped me. And like I told you, I had to fight for my life. The only thing is I beat him to the punch. Hey, look. <laughs> If you want me to help you, you're gonna have to calm down, all right? Because it doesn't work like that. This this doesn't look good, not at all. Can someone just fucking please loosen these handcuffs for me? Well, what do you think? What do I think about what? Seriously? I'm talking about my sister. What do you think about my justice? You can help her, right? Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Best of the best. First thing in the morning, hop on the line, have my best guys on. Wait. I promise. Wait, what? Your best guys? Yeah. You mean you're not taking her case? Come on now, you know I can't represent him. You know where I stand with the church. Are we really having this conversation right now? Are you serious? Yes. Oh, that was a rhetorical question. You are not seriously telling me that you are not going to represent my sister, your sister? Correction. He was my brother. Uh. In law when I married you. Come on now. You know how hard I've been working to not take cases like this. He's no exception. Besides, a case of this magnitude is better suited for somebody who does not have any personal ties. It's gonna give him a better chance of winning. Trust me, you know what I'm doing. So, let me ask you this. Sure. You not taking this case, it has nothing to do with her life choices. Wait, what? Okay, let me, let me ask you this clear because I don't know you're not understanding me. You not taking this case has nothing to do with her being a, a transgender? I normally don't pry, but I would not be a friend or confidant if I did not ask. When are you, my son? Well, I, I came to talk to you about something, Pastor. You could talk to me. Remember, there isn't anything that God can't handle. I came to talk to you about a case that I was recently asked to take. You know, uh, my wife Sheena and I, we've been married for uh, eight years now. I understand with marrying her, I was marrying into her family. In this case, my client would be my brother-in-law. You know, I couldn't give him my undivided attention because I couldn't wrap my mind around his life choice. Sheena, she disagrees. She feels like I should put his lifestyle aside and assist him. You know, and... I'm 
some judging, and I know the Lord, he teaches us not to do so. You're a good man, Lawrence. And, and that the convictions that you feel can seem overbearing, and this too shall pass, my son. I, I can't tell you what to do in this case. However, I can tell you that Although your wife is against you in this matter, you must take a stand and do what you feel is right. But that's the thing. I don't, I don't know if I am right about this one. I disagree. I feel that your first reaction was your right reaction. Now, I know you feel this young, young he, she is, is innocent, but that is not your job to protect Blatant sinners, that's the job for those who are, are lost, filled with corruption and greed to defend. Not an upright, righteous Christian lawyer like yourself. Yes, sir. I understand if you, if you can't take the truth, my son, but we can't have the acceptance of such sin in this church. We pray that 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 will fade away from these walls and never to return, never to enter. So, showing support cannot be tolerated here. One day you will, and you will understand that, that you have stand for something, my son, or you are going to fall for anything. So, what are you here for? I mean, you made it perfectly clear that you did not want to represent me, okay? So I'm not sure as to why you're even here. Are you done? No, I'm not done. Actually, you know what? Did you tell my sister the other day how you came down here acting all high and mighty and didn't do shit? I mean, if I know my sister well, she probably dropped your lame ass, didn't she? <laughs> I bet she did. I know she did. <laughs> Go ahead. You can speak now. No. I will not be representing you justice, but I came down here to tell you that I found someone who will. Wait, what? Is that the only reason why you're here? Garden, I would like to go back to myself, please. Yeah, you, you're free to go. No. Actually, can I? One thing. You know, it's funny how my sisters had my back my whole life as I was a little girl and still to this day. You know, Lawrence, I don't hate you. I mean, I can clearly see that you feel like shit. You know, it's not you. It's those jaded rules of a religion that shuns out God's children because of how they're born and who they love. And it shouldn't be like that. If I was raped and killed that night, Lawrence, my sister would have lost the last family member that she has. You guys would have mourned me. You have a chance to save me, Lawrence, and yet you refuse to. But you know, after all of this, Lawrence, I forgive you, and you know why I forgive you? No. Why? You know, the word of God says that if you forgive others for the wrong that they have done to you, then he will forgive you for the wrongs that you've done to others. But if you don't forgive others for the wrong that they've done to you, he's not going to forgive you. I mean, don't quote me, but that's Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, 15. You look surprised. You see, my sister used to read the word of God to me whenever I felt like giving up and not believing anymore. You know, I grew up tormented by my damn life, okay? And my decisions and how I wanted to be. I can't help the way I feel. <laughs> you see, she felt that God made me this way, the way that I am right now. You know why? Because she always used to tell me, you're so beautiful. God has made you for greatness, baby. And I believed her. She's the one that had the courage. 
I thought when she married you, she had finally found her a winner after all those suckers that she had. But yet, <laughs> you a sheep. I mean, before I leave, take this to your pastor, okay? If I'm not mistaken, it says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. And forgive and you will be forgiven. <laughs> and that is Luke chapter 6, verse 37. <laughs> now I'm ready. Wait. Have a seat, Justice. In two days. You come home. Okay, let's, let's start over. We need to talk. Oh, you want to talk now? Yes. <laughs> I don't like how things ended the other night. You mean the fact that I asked my husband, a great lawyer, to defend my innocent sister, who was sitting in a jail cell right now, rotting, and he said no? Why? Because he doesn't want the church or the community to think that he cares about transgender people. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were actually somebody that cared about people. And, and you fought for rights. But no, 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 no. You're just like the rest of the people in the world who judge based on things that don't even matter at the charge at hand. I, you know what? Excuse me. Did you ever stop and think about how this could be affecting me? <laughs> Did you ever think about how this could flip and turn my way of believing things upside down too? It's not as black and white as you think. What? Yes, it is. It is completely black or white. There's no room for any gray in between. I mean, you either care for humans or, or you, you just, you're just the judgmental asshole who sits up there and refuses to help people who need help. You have the skills to save lives and you're refusing to do so to save what, face? For, for a church? You know what, if they fault you for this, they don't even deserve to call themselves the house of God. Now I think you're taking this too far. How? Please, tell me how. A, a church, a house of God, it, it would not turn away anyone seeking the Lord, let alone judge them. And, and you know what? If, if it was up to me, I would leave it up to God. That's why I'm taking the case. Wait, what? That's why I'm taking the case. You were right all along, right? When I, when I married you, I married into your family. I apologize for it taking so long for me to come to terms with that, but I'm here now. And that's why I'm taking the case. Why didn't you say anything earlier? Well, you know, I'm a lawyer, so you know, I had to plead my case. <laughs> and for my closing argument, I love you. I talked to Justice and everything that he told me that you've done for her, for her to become the woman that she's became, that's all because of you. I can't believe that someone like that would be in a situation and not have the help they need, so I can't let that happen. I can't stand for that. She deserves the best representation no matter who she decides to love, no matter what the choice of lifestyle. I promise you, you have my word, I will do everything in my power to make sure that we bring him, I mean her, home. <laughs> so, you didn't know him at all? No, I did not know that fucking dickhead. Okay, so when I ask you this in front of a jury, I just need a yes or a no. Okay, no, I do not know him. Okay, that, that's important. Okay. Do you, do you think that I like, I mean, 
I did. But you do believe me when I say it was self-defense, right? And make sure you understand something. In the court of law, it's not about what happened or what didn't happen. The proof is in the evidence and the story that we convinced the jury to believe or not believe, all right? So you wanted me to represent you in this case, right? Yeah. So when we're out there in the courtroom, I need you to listen. Okay. I need you to answer when I ask and answer with the truth. And I can do that. All right? Yeah. And shut up when I say shut up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. I see why my sister chose you. Okay. We're done for today. Okay. Hello? Mr. Van Gross. Yes. How are you? This is Rick Strayfield. Rick Strayfield. I know exactly who this is. How are you? How can I help you? Yeah, well, uh, I just wanted to see if we can meet to discuss terms of your case. Sure, that, that's, that's not a problem at all, but I will have you know if it is anything less than my client walking away, then we have to politely decline the offer. Wow, that's pretty arrogant seeing that you haven't heard the offer or spoken to your client. You heard what I said? I'm sure your tone would change after I tell you what I have to say. Back so soon? What the hell is this? I'm not playing with you. You told me you didn't know him. I don't know him. You told me you didn't know him. Why is he in this picture with you? The thing is, if you want me to help you, right? You wanted me to represent you, right? I told you, for me to represent you, you have to tell me the truth, leaving no details behind. Why? I didn't. I promise, I don't know him. I don't know, where, I don't know, I don't know. I promise, I did tell you the truth. Help me understand why he's in this picture with you. I don't know. His arm is around your neck. Do you understand? Look. For me to help you, you're gonna have to trust me, all right? I don't think you understand how bad this looks. You have to think hard, like what, like, what happened that night? How is it that you and him ended up in the picture together? Think hard. I mean, the only thing I remember of that night was just hanging out with my girl. Bartender, can I you know please I take our picture not for us? No! Really? Can you get out of our picture, Evelyn? Looks like that. Yes! No, we don't want to drink. Do you want a haircut? <laughs> Bye! Oh, shit, it's like that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Girl, what is that? Did you see that? I apologize, Justice. We're gonna get you out of this mess. No one deserves to be put through what you've been put through. No matter who they are. You're a human being, you have rights. We got your back. Pastor James, good evening. Blessings, man of God. If you're not busy tomorrow afternoon, can you please come by the church? Oh, of course. Yeah, not a problem. Good morning, Lawrence. How are you? Good morning, Pastor. I'm well. How about yourself? Bless my son. I called you here uh, today because as you know word is spreading that you did not heed my advice about not taking the case and I must admit I'm a little disappointed at that but, 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 but no your choice to step in and defend someone who has has blatantly turned their back on God you have made a mockery of this church. What does that say about the word that we preach? We are the voice of the community, the true messenger of God. 
but you took our word and made it worthless. Sir, if I may, I would like to say something. Pastor James, with, with all due respect, I don't give a damn about your beliefs on how I run my family. Hey, you listen. No, you listen. Pastor, when I came to you, I came to you to seek out advice and guidance. And I have to say that I walked into your office filled with doubt and conviction with the thoughts of whether or not I should save an innocent man's life or not based on his sexual orientation. I swore an oath to stand up for what is right to protect those who need protection because the Sixth Amendment guarantees the right for legal counsel at all significant stages of criminal proceedings. It is my duty to assist this young man. You have to understand that. Justice, I do have some good news for you. I told you we were gonna look out for you. Yes, oh my God. He knows that I've been praying so hard. Like, this means the world to me. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Hey, you're welcome. Even in the court of law. Oh, God is good. Only God can judge you. Amen, brother. <laughs> 